Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. This afternoon I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Routledge. It's an important book because it deals with something that's new for quite a lot of people. It's the International Criminal Court. Now the book itself is called, it's got a title, The International Criminal Court in Search of Its Purpose and Identity. Been edited by uh, Tristino Marianello. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. It's part of the Taylor and Francis group at Routledge and it's the Routledge Research in International Law. Now my wife Elizabeth and I have been through this book and had a chat about it. We've given it a title, A Welcome Contribution to the Scholarship of International Law. Let's have a look at the book first. It's on Kindle as well. There's the front. There's nothing in, really on the side or back. It's the Routledge Research in International Law, you can see at the top, the banner headline. Let's just go to the back first of all. It's a hard back, it's 287 pages, just under 300. There's the index you can see at the back. It's an excellent book, this one, by the way. You've got a lot of footnoting at the sides, very much... Uh, you've got subheadings, no paragraph number, very much the style of Routledge and this particular series. Um, there's a bibliography at the end, which is also very helpful for further referencing, but that's at the end of each chapter, so you'll find uh, that information not right at the end of the book, but actually at the end of each chapter, which is a bit easier. Now, that sets out the basis of this work, and what you've got here is a whole series of titles in this research series from Routledge. You can see there are quite a large number that are there. There's the front page there. And then the various parts which you can see are set out. Um, there's the next part in that bit, acknowledgements. Then you've got the various contributors and there are quite a large number of contributors who are included in this. You can see, I can't go through all the names, but there are a lot of people who've been involved there. And then you've got abbreviations, which again, I think is very important. It does help trying to understand some of the various abbreviations. There we go again. Then we go into the, the first book itself, uh, the first essay rather itself. One, no one, and 100,000. Reflections on a multiple on multiple identities of the ICC. So really it's looking at how it's um, developed and where we're going with it at the moment. That's the book, as I say, it's a hardback and an interesting book. Now, we say the following, we say that international lawyers as well as academics and researchers will welcome this work of scholarship from Routledge's distinguished and highly regarded research in international law series which now includes at least 40 titles, and they are actually the front of advertising in the front of the book form. This book is one of the latest, and thanks to the editor, Triestino uh, Marianello, it offers a clearly presented history and analysis of the International Criminal Court, the ICC. Now, the ICC, as the editor explains, embodies the main legacy of the International Military Tribunal of Nuremberg, which was set up at the end of the Second World War to bring war criminals of Nazi Germany and also of the Empire of Japan because they had a separate um, system over there in Southeast Asia. Uh, that brought them to justice and to punish them accordingly. And its main proviso, which we quote, was that, quote, crimes against international law are committed by men, not by abstract entities. And only by punishing individuals who commit such crimes can the provisions of international law be enforced. And that's really the purpose behind the establishment of these tribunals, which was really a first. Um, we never really had anything like that in modern history. Uh, but because of the enormity of the crimes of both the Nazis and the Japanese, uh, things had to be sorted out, and that's what happened. The ICC has therefore become the first permanent international criminal tribunal, which, as the editor explains, has jurisdiction over the most serious crimes of concern to the international community as a whole. Genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes and crimes of aggression. The book includes the proceedings of an international conference which was held in 2013 at Edge Hill University on 
what was entitled The First Ten Years of the International Criminal Court, Achievements and Challenges. The result is a valuable work of reference which presents the collaborative efforts of 15 contributors, each from either a legal or academic background or both, and all are experts with a formidable array of qualifications and experience in the field of international criminal law. Divided into four parts, the book focuses initially on crimes and modes of liability, including the case for inclusion of terrorism in the jurisdiction of the ICC. Part two, on the rights of the accused and of victims, tackles, for example, a right not to be tried twice for international crimes. That's a controversial issue, of course. And then turns to the fourth matter of victims' reparations. Part three goes on to examine the relationship between the International Criminal Court and states. By signing and ratifying the Rome Statute, says the editor, that states voluntarily accept a limitation to their sovereignty is what actually ensues. This, he adds, is a revolutionary development in international law, and one that he develops and is developed by the contributors. In part four, on application, uh, on rather on applicable law, and judicial creativity. There's an interesting chapter on the confirmation of charges at the ICC, which examines such issues as evidentiary threshold for committing a suspect for trial. So the system is, the procedural system is obviously uh, slightly different from what we would be used to say in the English courts, or from that matter in the Scottish courts. As evidenced by the extensive bibliographies which follow each of the 12 chapters, so they're not at the end, but they're at the end of each chapter, and the copious footnoting, this book is a treasure trove of resources for researchers in this field. Presented um, and insightful, the commentary and analysis of the workings of the ICC are really set out very clearly, and it's a, it's a readable book. And it's also a valuable contribution to studies in international law, particularly in the face of increasing terrorist threats to international stability. The date of the publication is cited at 2015. Now, this is the book again. I'll just show it to you again so you can see it. There we go. Just open it in the middle. There we go. You can see some very basic information there. Again, you can see the footnoting and how it's all done. I think the important thing to bear in mind with the ICC is that it's probably going to expand its jurisdiction. It may well have to with all the things that are happening uh, within the world. And it would be nice to see a bigger budget uh, for them because, frankly, there are quite a large number of people who should be arraigned in front of this tribunal for the behaviours that have been carried out, the appalling behaviour in certain countries. I think the issue about terrorism is going to be the one that's going to run. And we'll see how this develops in the next 40 to 50 years. Uh, but it's certainly an interesting um, step forward after the precedent was uh, set in 1945 and 1946 with Nuremberg, which basically paved the way to make it clear that despots who go around killing massive numbers of people are not going to get away with it. Thank you to all concerned for a very important um, publication on international law, which will be very useful for generations to come. Thank you. Bye-bye.